Radiographs of the knee may be taken with or without the use of a grid. The factors to consider in reaching this decision are the size of the patient's knee and the preference of the radiographer. Having said that, most of our clinical facilities choose to do the knee within the bucky at all times unless otherwise necessary. In addition, gonadal shielding is needed during examinations of all lower limbs. However, the lead shielding is not shown on the illustrations of these patient models because it would obstruct the demonstration of the body position. Most often, the image receptor size or image plate is either an 8x10 or a 10x12, and typically they are placed portrait. This is a picture of the AP knee projection. For this position, place the patient in the supine position and adjust the body so that the pelvis is not rotated. With the IR under the patient's knee, Flex the joint slightly, then locate the apex of the patella as if the patient was to extend the knee, then you can center the IR approximately one half inch below the apex of the patella. This will also help center the IR to the joint space. In positioning the knee, you may adjust the patient's leg by placing the femoral epicondyles parallel with the IR for a true AP projection. This can be done through palpation. Also, the patella lies slightly off-center to the medial side. This is important to remember. When directing the central ray, direct it to a point one half inch inferior to the patellar apex. The following resulting image should show an open femoral tibial joint space. The patella should be completely superimposed on the femur. Also, there should be no rotation of the femur and there should be slight superimposition of the fibular head if the tibia is normal. Also ensure that the intercondylar eminence is centered in the film. One thing I failed to mention previously is a central ray when directed one half inch inferior to the patellar apex typically has a five to seven degree cephalic angulation. This is important for opening the femoral tibial joint space. Next you can perform the AP oblique projection in medial rotation of the knee. For this, simply medially rotate the limb and elevate the hip of the affected side enough to rotate the limb approximately 45 degrees. You may have to place a support under the hip if necessary. Once again, the central ray is directed one half inch inferior to the patellar apex with the five to seven degree cephalic angulation most commonly used. The resulting image will show an AP oblique projection of the medially rotated femoral condyles. The tibia and fibula should be separated at the proximal articulation, also known as a tibiofibular articulation. Additionally, the margin of the patella should be projecting slightly beyond the medial side of the femoral condyles. Next, ask the patient to turn on the affected side and ensure that the pelvis is not rotated. For a standard lateral projection, have the patient bring the affected knee forward and extend the other limb behind it. The other limb may also be placed in front of the affected knee if necessary. This is a medial lateral lateral projection of the knee, which is most commonly used in clinical practice. When positioning the knee, Flexion of approximately 20 to 30 degrees is usually preferred because this position relaxes the muscles and shows the maximum volume of the joint cavity. However, if fractures recently occurred, be sure not to flex the knee more than 10 degrees to prevent further injury. When directing the central ray, be sure to direct it to the knee joint one inch distal to the medial epicondyle at an angle of five to seven degrees cephalid. The resulting radiograph should show the femoral condyle superimposed and also perpendicular to the IR. There should also be open joint space between the femoral condyles and the tibia. The patella should be seen in lateral profile. There should be an open patellofemoral joint space. The knee should be flexed approximately 20 to 30 degrees and the fibular head and tibia should be slightly superimposed. When presented with a rotated knee image, the fibular head and tibia, which are supposed to be slightly superimposed, can sometimes be a determining factor in, turning, in determining whether it is over-rotated or under-rotated. 
Over-rotation causes less superimposition of the fibular head and the tibia, whereas under-rotation causes more superimposition. So when examining X-ray A, you can notice that here there was great superimposition of the tibia and fibular head. Therefore, this radiograph is under-rotated. The correction was then made with the same patient and X-ray B was created.